the battle between the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefile, and the Department of State Services over a plan to arrest the governor may have been put on hold as Emefile resumed yesterday. The CBN governor on Monday resumed at the CBN headquarters after spending several weeks in the United Kingdom and the United States following reported plots by the DSS to arrest him. The bank has urged Nigerians to continue to support the policies of the bank uh, aimed at ensuring a stable financial system and the Nigerian economy in general. Well, joining us to discuss this is Dotun Hassan. He is a legal practitioner and Achike Chude, who is a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us tonight. I, I think that both of you are muted, so we can't hear you. Okay, but I'm going to start I'm with. Not, I'm uh, not muted. Okay, I can hear you now. Um, I'm going to start with you, Achike. Yeah, Achike. Achike um, first things we. First things first. Um, there seemed to have been a pause, you know, um, with the CBN governor and him making the news and the headlines right after the very interesting um, change of, and, of the look and feel of the Naira. Um, there was not a lot happening in that area. And then the story of the fact that his office was being, um, you know, invaded by some men suspected to be from the DSS. Now, we remember that um, the senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana, was quoted to say that Emefile was not in the country. Um, and, um, and then the next thing we saw was that invasion. Even though the, the, State, the Department of State Services has come out to say that these men did not belong to the DSS, um, what do you make of this? Or did this not even happen in the first instance? Hmm. Well, it's... Um uh, you continue to see manifestations of the theater of uh, the absurd uh, in Nigeria, uh, obviously. Um, the, the, the whole episode between the NFL and the DSS is another, um, another happening, another event that, uh, uh, that is also unprecedented. And so when you look at so many other things that have gone on within the polity, especially under the platform, under the watch of uh, Mr. President and, uh, of, and the APC, the All Progressive uh, Congress, uh, you realize that um, uh, so many things are taking, you know, uh, beyond the pale, that uh, so many things are getting to the zenith. Uh, and uh, some of these things are unprecedented, or even if there, these are things that have happened in the past, but these ones have gone to a completely different level. Uh, we have never had an instance in this country where uh, the DSS uh, will seek, will go to court and seek to arrest, uh, you know, a sitting CBN government. Uh, but again, you just, it is good that you mentioned the Femi Palama because he was the one that reminded us about a similar scenario uh, under the Jonathan administration when uh, they, uh, they, that administration had a running battle with the former CBN uh, government, uh, former uh, um, uh, uh, the man in charge of uh, well, uh, the uh, area of uh, yes. Uh, yes. That is yes, uh, that's Lamido Sanusi. We do have some, okay. um, we, we yeah. do have some audio that's coming it. from one of you. I don't know where it's coming from. That I see. Is there, am I okay now? Because I was also hearing that. Anyway, so uh, yeah, well, it, it was the same scenario with uh, Lamido Sanusi, you know, the, the Lamido, and the former Emir of Kano, uh, where the government tried to also arrest uh, him because they had a running battle with him. So it's not a new thing. And what was the charge against, uh, you know, Sanusi then? It was the same charge of terrorism. So what it tells you is that we, I don't know exactly what it is that um, uh, Mekele, you know, has done uh, to incur the wrath of uh, the DSS. But one thing that is obvious is that um, uh, Mekele has needlessly courted controversy uh, since he became the governor of uh, the CBN. And the height of it, really, you know, uh, which was insulting to a lot of Nigerians, was that he had desecrated the position of the central bank governor to double into politics. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know, you know, the position of uh, the central bank governor. The, usually, a, a, a banker is said to be a very conservative kind of person. He doesn't cut controversy. When you become the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, even more so, you know, your conservatism, you know, and, and you don't get into all this controversy. So that was, was a law 
for the governor of uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria. So from that, then we went into the controversy of uh, this uh, new currency. Obviously, he has the right uh, to institute uh, a, a new currency to, uh, you know, to redesign the currency of uh, Nigeria. The CBN Act gave it, gives him that right as long as it's in consultation with the president. But that also had its own controversy because the Minister of Finance, who should have been in the know, or said that she had no idea of what was going on. You know, so, but beyond that is the fact that when eventually this, uh, the DSS wanted him arrested, they went to court. And the judge in the court, the, the judge was, was also very smart and wary and suspicious of what the DSS was trying to do because that uh, activity itself of taking, of going to court to effect, for, for, to get an order to effect his, his arrest was cloaked in the chief. If you remember what the judge said, he said, I know a certain God in a Mephile. Is it the same governor of Mephile that is the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria? And when the DSS answered in the affirmative, he was wondering why it, it was hidden because the Godwin Mephile is a known name in the country. You know, and then beyond that, he said, look, but the other day, just about 24 hours earlier, the Emefele, I saw him in Asorok. He was in Asorok, with, obviously with the president of this country, uh, uh, with the president of the country. And so if you needed to effect an arrest, you, in the first place, you didn't even need to come to the court to seek the permission of the court to arrest him. He does not have immunity. But it is proper for you to also see the man who appointed Emefele as governor of the CBN uh, to also discuss whatever it is mm. you have found wrong with Emefele. So, you know, for me, the whole thing, whatever, you know, is going on between the DSS and the Netele has nothing, and I believe it has nothing to do with terrorism. And the reason why I say so is this. Perhaps we don't even know whether the DSS or the people trying to, you know, uh, who are uh, trying to uh, get rid of Netele, I don't, I'm not sure whether they have approached the EFCC or the police, obviously, or the ICPC. Because it is those institutions, if a Mephile has been involved in any kind of corruption or financial crime, it is those institutions that should be the organizations, you know, that, that should be involved in the, in, in the prosecution of okay. a Mephile. That okay. did not happen. So, for the, so uh, lastly, so for the DSS to be able to effect an arrest, they had to say something that was within the purview of their operation. And that is to insinuate that he is sponsoring terrorism. And that's why they were able to get to weigh in on what is going on. But okay. it is surprising that the president of the nation has not said anything about what is going on. Exactly. And, and, and that's my question to um, Dr. Dr. I think that you're in a very noisy place and we're unable to hear you clearly because all we can hear is some background noise. I, I hope that you can you know, deal with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can hear you clearly. Can you hear me clearly now? Yes, but we're getting feedback from you. Um, what do you think this is about? Because, again, just like Achike has said, he doesn't think that this has anything to do with terrorism. If the CBN governor was seen recently with Mr. President, again, my question is, if the DSS works for the presidency or reports to the presidency, what exactly do you think is going on here? And should we be worried about the fact that if the DSS may be acting on their own? And what else should we be worried about? Well, let me first of all clear an impression. The DSS is an institution that is established by the Act of the National Assembly and has the sole right to investigate any matter whatsoever that has to do with the territorial interest of this country, be it security, financial issues, as far as they can suspiciously believe that it's a crime to be committed or a committed crime, they can investigate and report to the, to the appropriate authorities Dr. Wen, are you there? Uh, I think that we've lost that connection. Dr. can you hear me? Unfortunately, I think we've lost that connection again with Dr. Dr. Wen, are you, are you there? Can you hear me? Uh, sorry about that. Well, um, Dr. Wen, can you hear me? Achike, I think... we believe that it's a okay. way the DSS uh, needs Dr. to really... Dr. we lost you for a second. We didn't hear anything that, that you said. The DSS have been immersed in act of um, on, 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 on lawful arrest, attacks, invasions of judges, of houses, of all of that, they still have those right to investigate. But if be that as it may, there is just a need for more human rights face to be rejected into the, the operations of the DSS. And I just want to um, believe that that is why um, they, they approached the court to seek 
for a warrant of arrest, they might not have done much of disclosure before the court, depending on the, their investigation. They say they've already unraveled investigation. And such investigation, according to the law, they are discreet and need not be told to the whole world. But we believe if the CBN governor had no skeleton in the cupboard, it should also be able to come forward. So, so Doctor, you believe that the CBN governor is, is could be funding terrorism? Be Doctor, can you hear CBN me? CBN governor on, on, um, on notice that they, they cannot grant the the expert, the motion expert, they, without putting the governor on notice. So, for be that as it may, in as much as the, we've had issues of national security, the, DS, uh, the, the, the CBN governor to have heard in law by also um, junketing into political arena, which is which ought not to be. So there are a lot of anomalies that is going on in the system. And it seems the Nigerian system gives room for this kind of excesses, for this kind of impunity. And for whatever, this should not be seen as an issue of ethnic interest or somebody wanting to, to remove a Delta person and they need a Delta chief of army staff to protect each other. Or there are a lot of issues that we need accurate information. Okay. For this issue to be properly put in the right information, we expect the Minister of Information to have given us the right and detailed fact because the, the CBN governor is an appointee of Mr. President. He, I'm sorry, they, there's what a does, need what for does... the government to give us report because this is the same government. So whatever the cabals within are operating upon, the law is sacrosanct. But okay. whatever I want to believe that the DSS must have unraveled, let there be a proper disclosure because if there okay. is a substantial and prima facie evidence of criminality, let that be put to the fore. Nobody's above the law. Let them work with the necessary operational guideline. I don't, I don't know if you can hear me, Dato. I'm so going to ask Once they have met Dato. with the necessary operational guideline, let them now go forward. They okay. need to have served the... Dato, I need, I need, I need to be sure that you can hear me. So I'm going to ask a simple question. Do you believe that the Central Bank Governor, Godwin Emefiele, is involved in financing terrorism? I'm asking this question succinctly because you've said oh, the Minister of Information is supposed to wade in on the matter and tell us exactly what's going on. Um, what if, because you've also said that the, the DSS does have some form of independence, why sh what would the Minister of Information be saying to Nigerians if he's not privy to what the DSS is doing? Dotun, I'm so sorry, I don't think you can hear me, so I'm going to toss that question to uh, Achike. Achike, some of the things that Dotun has said for me um, raises a lot more questions. Um, again, if it has to do with uh, terrorism, I mean, like he said, we can't put anything far from anyone, especially for a person who has, seen to, who has been seen by all Nigerians to have political leanings. Um, we're not in any way passing judgment, but then we're asking. Um, if the information minister is being asked to speak, what exactly will he be speaking on? And I ask again, could the DSS be working on their own, being that they do not have anyone to trust? And why would Mr. President be left out of all of this? When you have a government that is weak, there is a possibility of having a government within the government. You know, and there we have heard instances of the big followers, people who are working within a government or within a structure and that they are also working against that structure indirectly without letting their hands show. So I don't know exactly what is going on. But what I'm saying is exactly what the judge said. The judge was surprised that the DSS, first of all, needed the intervention of the court to affect the arrest of anybody because they did not need that direction from the court. They did not need that direction to investigate anybody. Obviously, for them to have come to the court, it must have been based on an investigation that they had already carried out on the CBN government. So that means they didn't need the direction of the court to institute an investigation. And then why do you now, after having investigated and you feel you have a case, why do you need the permission of the court to effect the arrest of the governor of the CBN? Uh, you know, so these are some of the things. And they did, and in getting to the court, they hid the identity of the person that they were going to, you know, uh, that they wanted the court to intervene, you know, or, 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 you know in on. And that is the identity of the CBN governor. They just mentioned the name one Godwin and Methode, 
Now, they, they, or you, so you don't, you wouldn't blame the judge for being highly suspicious of the of the activities, you know, of of the motive of uh, the DSS. Besides, the judge had just seen the CBN governor about 24 hours before that time at the presidency with the president. So, if there was an issue, you know, and that is the way the judge was looking at it, as grave as the CBN governor, the central bank governor of a country like Nigeria, financing terrorism that has brought so much instability in the country. Why would the DSS, you know, chief, the director of the DSS, not go to the president with this grave allegation? Because you're about to move against one of the most important appointees of the president. And in doing that, you're going to embarrass the president and embarrass his entire administration. That his administration is housing people, you know, accommodating people who are, you know, busy undermining it's people who are in sensitive position, but busy undermining the territorial integrity of this country and bringing about instability of the Nigerian state. But that this is, is not new, means. is it? So this is not. This is not the first time that a sitting president has alluded to the fact that there are people who are either funding terrorism or parts of corruption in his cabinet. But, but Good luck, is, Jonathan. Did admit to that. Time. You see, but but this is the first time the direct the uh, the directorate of state services is coming with an allegation before a court to say it is the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria or that he's one of the people financing terrorism. This is unprecedented. It has never happened. So why will you not now discuss, since it has become a serious security issue that would have devastating, perhaps very debilitating, debilitating impact on the economy because of the position of the CBN governor, why would you not bring the matter up before the man who appointed him? Because he's responsible to the president. Final. So this is the issue. So nobody is saying, look, that the DSS does not have any authority to, to investigate anything that has to do with the instability of the Nigerian state, especially things like, like, like terrorism, you know, uh, 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 terrorism financing and the rest. But the issue is, why keep it away from the president? And mm -hmm. since that has happened, why has the president not made a statement? Either if he, he did not make a statement directly, he always talks to Nigerians in, through his, through his uh, spokesman, Joe Garba and the Femi Additional, or even through the Minister of Information. Why has the government been silent? And that is what is worrying, what is worrisome, what is worrisome about this government. That okay. in, mo in moments of national crisis, you know, national emergencies, the government, especially the president, is quiet. And so it is not in any way, it does not all go well for the government and for the perception that people have of this government as a government well, that is interested in what is going on in the country. I, I wish we could continue having this conversation because there are lots of questions that need to be answered. But again, we will revisit this issue. Achike today, I want to say thank you. He's a public affairs analyst. Dr. Hassan is a legal practitioner. Unfortunately, uh, he disconnected because of uh, connection issues. We couldn't really hear him. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And that's the show tonight. Don't forget, do go get your PVC. Find out where your ward is. Go pick it up or where you registered and make sure that you hold on to it because that's your passport to a new Nigeria. We'll see you tomorrow on Plus Politics as we talk continuously for development. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good evening.